In this lesson, we are going to discuss early human growth and development. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the major stages of human prenatal growth and development and explain the important processes that occur in the stages of human prenatal growth and development. Let us first dissect the term prenatal growth and development. Prenatal is the term used to denote the stage before birth. In simple terms, this is the pregnancy stage of life in which an offspring is developing in the mother's womb. Growth and development may sound synonymous to each other, but these are actually different terms. Growth refers to the increase in size and mass of a particular organism over a period of time. This may refer to the increase in height and mass, or in simpler terms, this is when one becomes bigger than usual. On the other hand, development means the progression from earlier or simpler to later or more complex stages in maturation. This goes beyond the physical aspect of growth. This is gearing more on the functions of an organ or the organism itself. For example, our brain is still in its simple stage when we are young, but it begins to process more information as we age, allowing us to do more things. This is called development. In this lesson, we are going to discuss how humans grow and develop during their prenatal period of life. It starts with fertilization, which is the process wherein the sperm cell penetrates the egg cell to produce a diploid zygote. Take note that the sperm and egg cells are both haploid cells, meaning each sex cell only contains 23 chromosomes. Fusion of these sex cells leads to a diploid number of 46 chromosomes. To look deeper on the process of fertilization, let us first identify the parts of the gametes which are vital for fertilization. Let us first discuss the parts of the egg cell. The corona radiata is used for the nourishment of the egg cell and is the outermost layer used for protection. The zona pellucida protects the egg cell and plays a role in the interaction between egg and sperm during fertilization. Cortical granules are regulatory secretory organelles found within oocytes and are most associated with polyspermy prevention after the event of fertilization. And lastly, the nucleus contains the genetic material from the mother. For the sperm cell, its main goal for fertilization is to penetrate the egg cell. This will be the role of the acrosome. This part contains enzymes for breaking the egg membranes to fertilize the egg cells. The head of the sperm has a large nucleus that carries the haploid set of chromosomes. The tail of the sperm consists of the flagellum for the most part. It has a pounding movement that helps the sperm cell to be motile during fertilization to enter the female gamete. Usually, only one sperm cell is needed to fertilize a female gamete. The fertilization process can be simplified using five steps. The first step of fertilization is the contact of the sperm cell to the egg cell. Contact happens when the sperm penetrates the corona radiata. It will be then followed by the acrosomal reaction. Remember that the zona pellucida protects the egg cell from polyspermy or multiple sperm penetration. In this process, the acrosome of the sperm cell will secrete enzymes to degrade a portion of the zona pellucida for the sperm cell to enter the egg cell. After this, the plasma membranes of the egg cell and sperm cells will fuse. The sperm nucleus dissociates from the cell and will enter the egg cell, leaving the rest of the sperm cell stuck in the zona pellucida. This will be followed by the fourth step, which is the cortical reaction. In this reaction, the cortical granule of the egg cell will release enzymes to harden the zona pellucida to block the other sperm cells from entering the egg cell. This ensures single sperm penetration. Once blocked, the nuclei of the egg and sperm will fuse to form the pronucleus. The egg is now completely fertilized. This signals the start of growth. Usually, only one egg cell is fertilized. However, there are cases in which multiple eggs are released in each ovary. This leads to fraternal multiple births. Fraternal fertilization leads to babies which do not look exactly the same. Growth starts in a process called cleavage. At this point, the fertilized egg is called a zygote. The zygote undergoes a series of mitotic divisions to develop into a blastocyst. There are cases in which one fertilized egg is completely split into two. This leads to identical or monozygotic twins. 
there are also very rare cases of identical multiple births. After one mitotic division, it will be in a two-cell stage, followed by a four-cell stage, then an eight-cell stage, and a 16-cell stage. A 16-cell stage is called a marula. This will continue undergoing mitotic divisions. After the seventh cleavage has produced 128 cells, the marula becomes a blastula. The blastula is usually a spherical layer of cells called a blastoderm surrounding a fluid-filled or yolk-filled cavity called a blastocele. Once this stage is reached, a structure called a blastocyst will be formed. The blastocyst must not be confused with the blastula. Even though they are similar in structure, their cells have different fates. The blastocyst is characterized by an inner cell mass. The blastula does not have an inner cell mass yet. The inner cell mass subsequently forms the embryo. The trophoblast or the outermost layer gives rise to the placenta. The blastocyl is a fluid-filled cavity which contains amino acids, proteins, growth factors, sugars, ions, and other components which are necessary for cellular differentiation. After this stage, the blastocyst continues to go down the reproductive tract until it reaches the uterus for implantation. Implantation is a process in which the blastocyst moves through the uterus and makes contact with the uterine wall and remains attached to it until birth. The lining of the uterus or the endometrium prepares for the developing blastocyst to attach to it via many internal changes. This process is very critical. If this process encounters some problems, this may lead to miscarriage. If the growing pre-embryo fails to attach itself to the uterus, it will grow in the structure where it will attach to. This leads to ectopic pregnancy which is harmful for both the child and the mother. Most of the ectopic pregnancies are tubal pregnancies. This means that the baby is growing and developing in the fallopian tube which is not elastic. The baby needs to be aborted to save the life of the mother. The next stage is gastrulation. During gastrulation, cells migrate to the interior of the blastocyst, subsequently forming three germ layers. The embryo during this process is called a gastrula. The germ layers are referred to as the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. The ectoderm is the outermost layer of the gastrula. It will form the epidermis and the nervous system. The mesoderm is the middle layer of the gastrula. It will form the muscles, bones, heart, blood, blood vessels, dermis, and the vertebrae. And lastly, the endoderm is the innermost layer of the gastrula. It will form the digestive and respiratory epithelia, pancreas, and the liver. Cell migration will continue until the cells will become more defined for organogenesis. Organogenesis is derived from the word organ and genesis, which when combined, means creation of organs. Organogenesis is the phase of embryonic development that starts at the end of gastrulation and continues until birth. During organogenesis, the three germ layers formed from gastrulation form the internal organs of the organism. A primary step in organogenesis is the development of the notochord, which includes the formation of the neural plate and ultimately the neural tube. The development of the neural tube will give rise to the brain and spinal cord. Organogenesis will continue until distinct characteristics are formed. At 6 weeks, the embryo is developing fast as vital organs and body systems start forming or continue to grow. The pregnant woman may still not feel that she is pregnant since there are almost no body changes. However, early signs of pregnancy are starting to show. In this stage, the embryo now has arm and leg buds. It also has neural tube or the tissue that forms the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and spine. It also has a large head and a smaller C-shaped body. It also has facial features including the eyes, nose, and jaw. The heart, dividing into four chambers and pumping blood, and lastly, the primitive germ cells responsible for the formation of male or female genitalia. At 8 weeks, in addition to external eye developments, the retina is now pigmented. 
the external ear has completed forming. The upper lip and nose have formed. Fission of the palate, bone occurs. Taste buds also formed. The heart is now beating at about 140 to 170 beats per minute. The limbs continue to develop as the arms and legs become longer. The fingers and toes now having a distinct appearance. The external genitalia remain unrecognizable. Following embryonic development, the fetal stage of development takes place. Fetal development begins from the ninth week after fertilization or usually at two months of pregnancy. It continues until birth. The fetus is characterized by the presence of all the major body organs, though they will not yet be fully developed and functional and some are not yet situated in their final anatomical location. At week 11, hands and feet are now placed in front of his or her body with individual fingers and toes. Nail beds are developing. Bones start to become hard. Week 13 marks the end of the first trimester and the start of a new stage in pregnancy. Trimester 2 lasts for month 4, 5, and 6 of pregnancy. At week 13, the ovaries or testes are fully developed. The sex organs are appearing. The baby can make a fist. Genitals are visible during ultrasound scan at 18 to 20 weeks. However, this is not always evident or reliable. The third trimester begins in week 28 of pregnancy and lasts until the mother gives birth. In other words, it is from the 7th to the 9th month of pregnancy. By week 31 of pregnancy, the baby will get signals from all five senses perceiving light and dark, and tasting what the mother eats, listening to the sound of the mother's voice. Around week 34 of pregnancy, the baby's body turns southward, settling into heads down, bottom up position. At around week 37, pregnancy is considered full term, and the baby is just about full sized. On the average, prenatal growth and development lasts for 40 weeks or around 9 months. However, some babies do not come out agreeing with the due date. Labor and delivery is the end of their prenatal growth and development. The baby will now come out of the mother's cervix and vagina through normal delivery or through incision via cesarean delivery. To wrap up this lesson, let us look at the timeline of early human growth and development. Growth and development will start after a sperm fertilizes an egg. At this point, it is called a zygote. It would undergo cleavage or mitotic divisions until it reaches the blastocyst stage. At this point, the zygote is now a pre-embryo. Once implanted to the uterus, pregnancy starts, and the growing offspring is now an embryo. It will be followed by cell migration patterns or gastrulation that would lead to the formation of organs. Once organs are evident, the embryo is now called a fetus. This ends the first trimester. The second and third trimesters are all fetal stages. Continuous organogenesis happens until the fetus reaches full term for birth. It is now called an infant and is now ready for postnatal growth and development. And that ends our discussion on early human growth and development.